Hey everybody. There's a lot of great content on YouTube about how to beat the London system, but the thing I've found is that most videos covering the London system and how to beat it as black, they require you to use some setup where you play d5 as black on the first move. And the problem with that is if you don't know your opponent is going to play the London system and you, if you play knight f6 like I do, then you know you can't use those systems. So today I'm going to show you how to beat the London system if you play 9f6. Now there's a great quote by international master Andras Toth, who he's also a streamer, he, about the London, London system uh, that he said a couple months ago and I want to share it because it, it perfectly describes my feelings about the London system as well and why I don't think it's a great opening for intermediate players to be playing. Um, and so here's a quote. He says, the London system, he says, quote, the London system is a system, excuse me, let's, let's start that over. He says, quote, the London is a system that is one, designed to teach you to avoid openings. That's terrible. Two, it allows you to play a very safe structure at the expense of entirely giving up on fighting for the center which is absolutely destroying your chess understanding at the very core. Three, it allows you to play the same structure over and over again, which means you're you are learning one stupid system instead of learning how to play chess. Four, it doesn't have the slightest chance to give you any advantage in any openings at all. Five, it's designed for you to survive instead of for you to actually fight and win. Quote. And that's the quote. And we're basically going to be taking advantage of all of these points in this knight f6 setup by not allowing white to get their same London setup that they're familiar with. And we're going to do that by playing aggressively from the very first move. And this will give you great chances against your London playing opponent because um, they're used to playing the London every single game. Uh, they're used to their setup. So if we can deny them their setup, they're going to get into a position they're unfamiliar with and you're probably going to be tactically stronger than them uh, in those types of positions, especially in the open positions. So that's our goal to gain both an actual advantage and a psychological advantage where white does not have their usual London setup, starting with c5 on the second move, not the first move, um, the second move. So let's look at this d4, knight f6, bishop f4, and here we play c5. And this is, in my opinion, the best practical move against London system players uh, if you play knight f6 on the first move. And it, if you need some evidence for that, just check the Lee Chess database. In expert level, non-bullet games, black's win rate is at least 5% higher than any other second move for from black. So, it, and if you don't realize how crazy that is for only being on the second move, 5% win rate higher, um, let me just say that that is crazy. So we're going to be going over uh, these five moves, um, uh, uh, e3, c3, d5, d cross c5, and knight f3 in that order. So the main line played in 58% of games is e3 so d4 knight f6 bishop f4 and we start with c5 and here white is going to play e3 and this is just they're just trying to continue their london setup uh, they're not really paying attention to what we're doing and here we're going to immediately deny white their london setup with the move knight d5 so we're attacking their london bishop obviously white can trade this bishop for our knight but that's not a good positional idea and also these these London players are never going to give up their London Bishop for nothing so every player will play Bishop g3 and here we take advantage that the Bishop is not on c1 anymore and we play Queen b6 oops we play Queen b6 and here white has three moves that they've tried uh, so the first one that I'd like to look at is Queen c1 which is the worst move and I don't know if this is a blunder or a sacrifice to avoid uh, weakening the dark squares on the queen side when the bishop is not over there, uh, but this simply allows black to be up a pawn. So this is this is just already not good for white uh, after this sequence of moves. C cross d4, e cross d4, queen cross d4, uh, knight f3 even, 
and just bring the queen back to b6. White maybe has a tiny lead in development, you could argue that, but it's not worth the full pawn. And also, white has no center pawns left, so black is going to get a great center. And I've just highlighted some moves that black can look forward to playing. So that's the first move, queen c1. Um, the second move that white can try here is knight to c3. So this is uh, counterattacking black's knight in the center. And here we should just simply take this knight, knight cross c3. Uh, and here black has threats of c cross d5, trading a wing pawn for a center pawn, which is usually pretty good, uh, as well as uh, both d5 and bishop b4. Actually, I thought I had drawn arrows, but they're not here. Um, maybe they're here. Yeah, okay, they're here. So yeah, black has threats of c cross d5, uh, and then as well as d5 and... Uh, moves like bishop b4. If white here plays rook to b1, we simply play queen to a5. Uh, and we've already achieved our plan of equalizing and not allowing white their, Lon their London setup. So this is already good for black. So that is knight c3. And the third move and most common move that white can play is b3. And here we should definitely take white's center pawn with our wing pawn. Like I was saying, it's uh, good to get that trade in. Uh, and here, uh, black ha excuse me, white has two moves, so e cross d4 is the main line. Uh, but let's also look at queen cross d4 really quickly. This sideline allows us to enter a queenless middle game. So black will have a pleasant p position with a beautifully fiend shadowed kingside bishop staring at white's weak queenside dark squares. And once again, the position is open, and we have disallowed white to get their London set up, giving great practical chances for black, so if we just look at these moves, queen cross d4, e cross d4, knight c6. So we've got some knight cross d4 and also knight b4 ideas. White can play knight f3 and we play g6, and this is just black's plan. Uh, this is going to be a very pleasant position for uh, black. Let me just check my notes really quickly. Um, excuse me, give me one sec, but... Yeah, so black black just has great practical chances here. I thought I had something written down, but I, I guess I don't. Um, so that's queen cross d4. And yeah, once again, we've already denied white their London setup, so that's an equalize, so that's uh, good enough for us, and black has great practical chances. But e cross d4 is the main line here, so e cross d4, and it, it's going to be basically the same line. We're going to play g6, Fianchetto, this dark squared bishop, and white may have to play c3 later on, uh, and it's just not a position that a young London player is used to playing. It's not a position a London player will enjoy playing, and black has great practical chances here, and actually this is what I was looking for uh, about a minute ago. Uh, black actually wins 61% of games from this position in expert level games, uh, even though Stockfish evaluates this as 0.0, .0, which 0.0, .0 for black on move six is already great for black. So, um, so yeah, this is this is great, and that's all I really have prepared for this main line uh, that starts with e3. So now let's go to the first sideline, which has been played in 16% of games, which starts with c3. So d4, knight f6, bishop f4, c5, and c3, and this is definitely my favorite line in this uh, c5 London line. I, I love going to this line every time. Black just has so much fun. So we want to start, <coughs> excuse me, um, here knight d5 isn't as strong, so we just want to play the immediate queen b6, uh, and we're, we're pressuring this d4 spot and also the b2 spot once again. Uh, the main idea of this queen b6 and also the c5 move, which prepares queen b6, is we're taking advantage that this bishop is no longer on c1, uh, it, and that's basically the, the idea. So, white has three moves here. Let's start with uh, let's start with b3. So, if white plays b3, we simply want to take this pawn, c cross d4. White will take back c cross d4. Uh, if white takes back with the queen, for example, queen cross d4. Here we're going to trade again. It's going to be somewhat similar to the last line we looked at. Uh, but this position is is already pleasant for black. The engine agrees. Stockfish evaluates this as minus 0.7. Uh, and we've also disallowed white's London setup. So this is great for black. So white captures with the pawn instead. 
Uh, here we simply play knight c6, and uh, here every single London player is going to play this next move, e3. It's the most played move by far, but it's actually a huge blunder because of this move, e5. It's a really long tactical sequence, and this is the beauty of opening preparation, because nobody is ever going to see this on board. Um, so white is not going to give up their London bishop for nothing, so they're going to play d cross e5. And this allows the next sequence, uh, which starts with bishop b4 check. Uh, white doesn't want to move their king, so they play knight d2. And here we play knight e4, uh, adding one more attacker on this knight. And white has to defend it with knight f3, that's the only move. And here we play g5. And our threat is we're going to play g4 and kick the knight away and then eat this pinned knight. That's the idea. And if if white eats this pawn with either piece, if they eat it with the bishop, we simply take the bishop. Um, or sorry, sorry. If they eat it with the bishop, we don't eat the bishop. We play knight cross e5. And this is just completely winning because now we're trying to deflect the knight away from the defense of both of the minor pieces. Um, if you turn on the engine here, this is already at minus four. It's still unclear, so it will require some thinking, uh, but you can win this position in a rapid or a classical game. Uh, it's already at minus like four and a half for black. I don't actually have the engine turned on, but uh, an example line could go like this, knight cross e5, Bishop cross d2 check, king e2, queen b5 check, knight c4, and queen cross g5. And that was following an engine line, and black is already up a piece here. So this is going to be great for black. So let's go back to our position right after queen b6. So we just looked at b3. Now let's look at the second sideline move, which is queen c2. And here we definitely want to take this C cross D4. Uh, we definitely want to take the center pawn. White is going to capture back. And the idea behind Queen C2 is it's kind of setting up a trap for black because after we trade this pawn, we can't actually take this pawn on D4 because not only will we lose a bishop, it's actually going to be checkmate. So we have to play Knight C6 here. And here Knight F3 is actually playable, but it's been rarely played. Uh, E3 has been played over 90% of the time. Uh, just defending this pawn and here we can play d5 and blacks already present pre prevented white's london setup they should be happy enough here but uh, here's just an, an example line i've prepared of what could happen if white plays some of the most popular moves uh, from the database so uh, here if white plays knight c3 this is actually an inaccuracy because of the next move uh, bishop f5 and so if the queen cannot take this bishop because queen takes b2 is a fork on the uh, knight and the rook. So here black has, excuse me, here white has tried two moves. If queen b3, we simply play queen cross b3 and a cross b3. And white has these two really weak double isolated b pawns. And here just, I've just highlighted some of the ideas that black has. Uh, bringing in knight to this b4 square, a6, even a5 in some positions, rook to c8. Uh, you can, once again, you can bring this bishop to b4, or you could just uh, fiend shadow it on g7. Probably not going to be as strong with this uh, pawn here, and just simply get castled. And this is a great position for black uh, on move 9. Uh, so that is queen b3, but the other move is bishop d3. And this allows this next tactical idea, knight b4, which this is a fork on the uh, bishop and the queen, so white has to respond with the only move queen a4 check. And here we save our bishop and our king, we play bishop d7. Uh, but now white has to save both their bishop and their queen, so the only move to do that is bishop b5. Actually, white can also play queen d1 here, but bishop b5 is, is very natural. Uh, so bishop b5, and here, if you notice, this bishop is actually pinned, which can allow our next move, knight d3 check, and this is a fork on the king and the bishop. Not only will white not be able to castle, but we're also going to uh, eat their beautiful London bishop, which London players love so much. Uh, king e2, knight cross f4, e cross f4, 
and e6, and uh, the game will continue to a middle game. So that is queen c2. Uh, and the main line after queen b6 is queen b3. So white offers a queen trade, which is the most popular move by far. And black can respond with a very forcing line, which will give black a favorable position in the end. And that's why I like this c3 sideline so much as black, uh, because if once they play c3, they're probably also going to play queen b3, and black can respond with just this very forcing line, which is very pleasant for black. So it starts with c cross d4. White has to trade queens here to avoid losing a pawn. So queen cross b6, a cross b6, c cross d4, and knight c6. And we have ideas of knight b4 and also knight cross d4. Uh, so here the most popular move by far has been played is e3. Uh, so that opening up the bishop and also London players, they just love playing these uh, e3 and c3 moves. So um, there's a good chance your opponent will play e3. And this allows our next move, knight b4. So we're, we have this double attack on a2. We have this double attack on a2. We're also threatening a fork um, on c2 like this. Um, I can't draw arrows here, but we're threatening fork on c2. And here white has tried three moves. So the best move is knight a3. But first we're going to look at the worst move, which is king d2. And this simply uh, loses immediately after knight e4. Uh, white will lose at least in exchange. And uh, it's, it's going to be very good for black. So the reason is... Uh, it's a fork on the king and the f2 square. And if the king comes to uh, e2 to defend the f2 square, then uh, knight c2 traps the other rook. So that's king d2. Uh, the second move is king d1. And here we have, we have we actually have a couple ideas here. Uh, both knight e4 and knight cross a2 are playable. So it's up to you which one to play. Uh, but knight, knight cross a2, for example, knight cross a2, uh, the king has to move again because if it stays on a light square, we're going to be able to check it and pick up the rook. Uh, so, for example, the king has to move back to e1, and now we can move our rook to a5, defending it. And um, we're, we may be able to undouble our pawns, and we're, we're just going to be up a pawn here. So this is, uh, this is good for black. Um, the other option for black is knight e4 here. And now black has to either play bishop g3 uh, or knight h3. Uh, knight h3 is not a pretty move. Bishop g3. Um, you can take this bishop here, but it's probably better just to continue with development. And uh, these knights are going to be very powerful. Um, prob probably just continue with knight cross a2 here. Th that's what I would recommend, actually. Uh, not going for this knight e4, um, but it, it is it is playable. I would probably play this knight cross a2 line, though. Um, so those are king d1 and also king d2. But the third move that is playable is uh, knight a3, which is also the most common. And black does have this move, rook takes a3, but it's not actually the strongest. Um, the idea is rook takes a3, b takes a3, and then knight c2 is a fork on the king and the rook. Um, but it leads to pretty much an equal position, which will lead to a lot of draws. Uh, so here I would re recommend playing d6. And this is kind of just preparing uh, bishop d7 to prevent a piece coming to uh, b5, the knight or the bishop. Uh, so here, if white tries knight b5 here, which is the most common uh, um, database move. I, I, I forgot the word database there for a second. Uh, most common database move. We can simply play king d8, and yes, we are giving up castling rights, but the queens are off the board, um, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, and here, white actually has to play back to a3 to defend this uh, c2 square, um, or they could move their king, in which case we can play a move like rook a5, uh, rook a5, or bishop d7, uh, if if white plays a move like king d1 uh, here. Or we could even we could even go for like a rook takes a2. I think if I'm not missing anything there, uh, but yeah, black has a lot of a lot of options here, and uh, this leads to a very tactical middle game. And London players are usually uh, slightly weaker on average in tactics than other players of their rating. So um, just on average, it, it will surely trouble London players playing as white here. 
So that is the first sideline C3. Let me just check how we're doing on time here. Um, okay, we're at 20 minutes, but I'm just going to continue. Let's just continue this uh, because the last three sidelines are fairly quick. So hopefully we can finish in under 25 minutes. Uh, so this is the second sideline, D5, D4, Knight F6, Bishop F4, C5, and D5. So D5 is Stockfish's recommendation. And this also aligns with the old Benoni theory, where if you play d4 and c5, white should play d5. But many London players are afraid to play this, as it concedes their normal London setup, uh, where you have the pieces, the pawns like this. So here our plan is going to be pretty, pretty much the same. We're going to play queen b6. And here white has three moves. Bishop c1 is just very sad. Uh, so knight c3 starts a very forcing line. We can play bishop, uh, queen cross b2. So the only move here for white is bishop d2. And now we simply play queen b6. Uh, and here white is going to play e4. And we can play d6. White will play f4 and we can play e5. And this is a check Benoni like structure where black is up a pawn. Uh, Stockfish actually slightly favors white here the uh, stockfish gives plus 0.2 but black has denied white their London setup so in my opinion they will have good practical chances um, so that's after knight c3 and uh, b3 is simply an inaccuracy where uh, white can gain a pawn after excuse me black can gain a pawn after queen b4 is a fork on the bishop and the king so if queen d2 then knight cross d4 or excuse me, knight cross d5, and black is going to be up a pawn. So white has to play bishop d2, and now black can play queen d4, which is a fork on the rook and the pawn, so the only move is knight c3. Uh, but this still allows black to gain a pawn, as black has two attackers. And Stockfish evaluates this position as minus 0.4, so black is going to be able to hang on to their pawn and be up a pawn. So that is the second sideline with the third move uh, from white being d5. Um, uh, the Excuse me, that was the second sideline. Uh, this is the third sideline. d4, knight f6, bishop f4, c5, and d cross c5. Uh, this move is not played very frequently because many players, uh, they think it's a waste of tempo to capture this pawn, and they think they're going to lose back the pawn eventually. They don't want to trade a center pawn for a wing pawn, and also it doesn't align with the standard London setup. So this is this move is very infrequently played, only in 5.6% of games. Uh, many moves are playable here. Uh, black for black. Uh, knight a6 is Stockfish's recommendation, the second most common move, and it also has the best win rate for black, 58% in the expert non-bullet database. But any of the highlighted moves here are uh, are also great for black and have win rates over 50%, which for move three is pretty good for black um, to have a win rate over 50% in an expert database. So th that's all I have for this sideline because it's it's just not very good for white. Um, and the fourth sideline is pretty similar. It's also not very good for white, uh, but it, it's good to be aware of. So d4, knight f6, bishop f4, c5, and knight f3 is simply an immediate inaccuracy uh, so black can punish white here with c cross d4 and here if white recaptures with the queen with queen cross d4 uh, black can play knight c6 gain a tempo on the queen and, and equalize the position very easily which is great for black on move four for this reason more white players are going to capture with the knight uh, but this simply blunders a piece after the tactical sequence e5 it's a fork on the bishop and the knight, so this pawn must be captured, bishop cross e5, and now this allows black to play the move queen a5 check, which is a fork on the king and the bishop, uh, knight c3, and queen cross e5, and white can already practically resign. So that's all the lines I have prepared in the London. This is basically all my prep against the London uh, as black, and it's worked wonders for me so far so now you can use it uh, i'll have a link to the study in the description uh, if this video helped you out make sure to leave a like and subscribe because i'm dropping daily chess content new chess videos every day lots of instructed 
lots of instructive chess. So um, don't miss out on that. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.